Hey, welcome back to Matt's Workbench, and today we're revisiting the $20 original iMac that we got off of Facebook Marketplace. Uh, we got two keyboards with this thing, and one of the problems with one of them was with it, some keys were stuck. So we're going to take that keyboard and see if we can get it all cleaned up, get those keys working again. So let's see how it goes. As you can see, some stuck keys here. And uh, we're going to take this apart as much as we can and uh, see what we can do. These things, I think, are very difficult to take all the way apart without destroying them. So we're just going to, mostly we're just going to remove the keycaps, clean underneath here, see if there's any way we can fix these. Uh, we got the plus sign, enter sign, and period on, on here. So I wonder if it's just like, these came from a school, so I imagine that uh, <laughs> kids just messed with them. And we'll be using my tools uh, here that I typically use to take these keyboards apart. So that's nasty, isn't it? Uh, but we got these little bars on there that we want to try to keep on there. We got a nice little uh, soup going here. Well, this is this is just hot soapy water. The problem is going to be right here. Like, see, we already have a broken tab off of a keycap here for one of these keys that was just mashed down. I'm, I'm guessing that, you know, one of these kids just <laughs> and uh, busted that up. But I don't know if you can see, you know, here, here, and here, those keycaps are just gone compared to some of these other ones here. So I'm going to get some... Uh, just some q-tips and things like that see if I can get this cleaned up hold on tight and I do want to hit this with some compressed air but I don't want to do it in my house I'm gonna step outside here real quick and spray this out outside alright so I have awoken all dogs within a one block radius of my home. That's that's nice. Um, we're just gonna take some soapy water. And one thing, um, my nephew Bryson, he reached out to me after seeing uh, the last video on the twenty dollar original iMac, and he said, "Hey, I got an idea for you to do with that uh, that other keyboard." He said, "What if you replaced the switches?" with some uh, pro gaming switches and uh, it can be kind of a sleeper keyboard you know it'll have the retro look but it will be a really legit gaming keyboard and that is uh, that is a fun idea but I think that's an idea that is outside of my skill level especially looking at this where you know this does not lend itself to replacing these switches um, so underneath this there is a circuit board, and uh, at least uh, at least this is what it looks like to me. I've not actually taken one of these apart. We may yet to get get to that point. Uh, taking these apart, there should be a circuit board, and then there are some um, what do they call them? Like capacitive uh, pads, to where uh, when the rubber touches with a conductive pad on the back, it completes the circuit. Uh, so there's actually no place to mount a switch. You'd have to put a new circuit board in here um, with a controller, USB controller compatible. And uh, I'm, I'm not saying that it can't be done and that it can't fit into this case because someone has probably done it. Uh, but that kind of fabrication is probably outside of my skill level. Um, you can kind of see along here some of these tabs that you could pop out maybe? I don't know. We may yet try to take this apart. I'm not against going for broke on this thing since we have another 
um, working keyboard. But we'll see where we go. So here is, yeah, so look at this. This is one of those keys that was stuck, and there's the rubber dome stuck inside. So I wonder if you can get another membrane for this computer keyboard. And if you can, if you can get just by the membrane, well, I guess at this point we'll take it apart no matter what, won't we? So this is the M2452. So let me just uh, do a quick little search here for the M2452 membrane. M2452 does not exist, does not exist. Uh, my guess is probably you're just going to have to find a, uh, a replacement keyboard. It's a bit of a bummer. So I guess let's go ahead and attempt to take this apart. We got four screws on the other side and the back, and then we got all of these little tabs here that we may or may not be successful with. So let's get a screwdriver and let's just see what happens. Plus, if we can shove this uh, keyboard wire back in there a little bit more, that would be ideal. screws are out. There's that. That. Ow. Alright. So there's that. Now, we've got these tabs here, and it looks like you can pry the bottom part out. Frustrating. That's a frustrating. Okay, that one came out, no problem. And this one. Hey, there we go. Not perfect. Not perfect, but we got her loose. Alright, we're still attached to something. I think we do have screws up here we're going to have to take off. Oh. Careful there. Well, no, see we're messing up the green. This is what I wanted to avoid. Ah, shucks. Shucky darn. Okay. Uh, what I do like about this channel is that it shows that you can just try and um, even if you're bad at it, you know, you still might succeed. Like, look at this here. We might end up with a working keyboard. Eh, probably not, but it's possible. We're just taking apart any screw we see now at this point. Oh, hey, look at that. That was it. Okay, so we still have the problem that this is mishmashed together. <laughs> Uh, all to get to a rubber dome that we can't replace. I'm getting in here deeper than a bargain for. <laughs> but let's do it. Let's just do it. Like I said, we got nothing to lose. You know, talk about the philosophy of doing things <laughs> and accidentally succeeding being the theme of this channel. And... You know, a lot of times people say, oh, I wish you could do, wish I could do what you do. And I mean, the difference is, like, if you if we mess this up, so what? You know, go into something with 
Low risk. Little to no risk. Um, it, this keyboard was already broken when we started. So if we don't repair this, you know, if we don't repair this, you know, we got a bunch of keycaps here that we can use either for our keyboard, or maybe there's people out there that are just missing the X key. And we can help them out, you know, like, that's a good thing. I've worked on other people's stuff from time to time, and I tell everybody if they're if you want me to work on your thing and try to fix it, uh, I offer no warranties, expressed or implied, and uh, I don't work for dollars. So figure out some other form of payment because I don't want you being mad that you paid me, you know, fifty dollars or a hundred dollars to try to fix your computer and then I didn't or didn't fix everything in uh, in between and there there's just so many opportunities with this stuff for misunderstanding that I just don't want to deal with it so I always tell people uh, I don't work for money you get no warranty and uh, you may not get your thing back at all depending on how it goes and if you're okay with those terms I'm happy to work on your stuff and I usually don't have to work on a lot of stuff that way <laughs> Like, uh, you know, some of the automotive stuff that I do, uh, I remember I would have been mid-twenties, and my car at the time was terrible, and so I decided I couldn't afford a new, like a brand new car, I couldn't afford a car payment, and I, so I said, I'm just going to go buy a cheap car, and I'm going to have to learn to fix it to myself. And that's when I got the 85 Toronado. Which uh, was such a good car. It had two hundred, no, it had one hundred and ninety-five thousand miles when I bought it. Um, but that was a great car for me, the perfect car for me at that stage of life, <laughs> because it taught me how to to work on that stuff. And and honestly, like I think about you know my thing, you know what's my thing? What do I really? What really brings me joy? in life and for me I really think it's it's just being self-sufficient you know being able to fix stuff uh, I derive a lot of pleasure out of that um, just from experiences where uh, let's see oh very very cool so this is the stuff that fascinates me so the only way that this interfaces to the board is through a con contact here on this strip here with this uh, electro printed mumbo jumbo there so very cool we can take this and get this out of the way now and that. Uh, but yeah I, I love being able to just take care of stuff myself and that doesn't mean I always fix it correctly or that uh, <laughs> that I don't make it worse. I certainly have at times done that as well. Uh, I was working on the exhaust one time on my uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee that I owned at the time. Uh, I wanted to put new exhaust on it but I couldn't. I just didn't get it lined up right and every time you went over a bump it would clunk and I, I tried adjusting it, and I tried beating on it and banging on it, and I finally gave up and uh, just had to take it in to get her repaired. So, Okay, here we go. Nice heavy piece of metal. I like that. So this is the actual... So again, like I was talking, um, you know, you can't put any switches in here because it's just this printed piece of plastic that when those domes reach down and touch uh, these these keys here they just don't work no mo uh, if you put switches in here so here's what we're gonna do alright see if we can pop this off get this out of the way what we can try to do is we can take these domes down here so it looks like we have four one two three four that are messed up and we can try to maybe steal some domes from other uh, machines 
or other keys, I should say. Less, oh, there they all go. <laughs> I was trying to put this LED back in for the caps lock, and I tipped it over, and they all came out. Son of a gun. <laughs> Oh, man. Okay, well, now that we know that we have little rubber domes here, <laughs> I mean, oh, we've lost everything. This is falling apart, literally. Just literally falling apart. <laughs> that is hilarious. Um, okay, well, we got more work to do. Here's a good one. Here's a bad, bad, here's a bad boy. Right there. Can you think of any way we could uh, get that working again? Can we put one of these? <laughs> put one of these on top. I mean, that might work for a little while at least. Let me think. There's got. I mean, if we've got these, surely there's something we can do. <laughs> I still can't believe I tipped that over. <laughs> I can't stop laughing about it. Oh, man. You see that? There's actually two of these sheets here. And probably all it's doing is pushing the two sheets together um, to make contact. Interesting. Okay, we may, make, we may be able to get this to work yet. We're not giving up. Oh, oh man, where was I? Was I talking about the Tornado? Getting that to work? Yeah, man, I, I repainted that car on my own, by myself, with a roller and Rust-Oleum. But uh, I did it uh, so gradually, and I wet sanded the crap out of it, and buffed it and polished it to the point where you couldn't tell that I painted it with a roller. And, uh, man, you should have seen the old guys that would give me compliments at the uh, at the gas station filling up for gas uh, it was it was very gratifying you know and I, I just get hooked on that feeling of taking something that is nothing or that people take for granted and turning it into something that people are like wow that's really neat yeah I'd intended this to just be a one part video that we could take this apart, clean it, put it back together, but now it's getting a little bit more in-depth. Okay, so we know that one of these was in the key right here. I wonder if the other ones are too. To me, what it looks like is somebody just hammered down on these keys so hard that this circle just whoosh, cut right through that dome just like a cookie cutter you know and here you can see some stress on the plastic from this actually receiving so much pressure so yeah I'm pretty sure somebody just pounded on this thing and just cut these rubber domes right off where did she go It's a little cleaner, not very much, just a little bit. But all these should match up, right? So we've got, yeah, so there's, man, it's gonna be impossible to see this because these are so tiny, but there's a little pointy part on this side. This side rests against the top of the key. Hard to see. I don't know if we're gonna be able to make this work or not, if we can put these back together with some glue and how we keep them functional. Yeah, this is definitely, so there's a little tear right there. How can we do this? All right, this is gonna be dumb, but I'm gonna drill a little hole in the eraser of this pencil. We don't need a big hole. We just need enough that that uh, little pointy guy can sit down in there. Should we try super glue? I'm afraid we're gonna super glue it to the 
<laughs> to the pen, the eraser here. That just be, might be part of the sacrifice we have to make. I have a feeling this is going to go poorly. And they always make these look like they got a lot of super glue in them. They never do. The problem is, even if this works, I don't know that it's going to be a good long term solution. <laughs> Because I don't know how many keystrokes um, something like this could handle. Oh no. Oh no, go, no, no, no. <laughs> Stay together. I can't hardly see what I'm doing either. That makes it even, even harder. But I don't know that that's going to be durable whatsoever. But maybe it doesn't matter. Boom, a chakalaka. Or now it's sticking to my finger. Ah! I'm tired and I want to go to bed at all. I'm going to let these dry overnight and I'm going to go to bed and we can try to put this thing back together tomorrow. Two day project. Great. I wanted a one, I wanted a one day video but it just never works out that way. Okay, it's day number two and these guys here have set up fairly nicely uh, but you can see here that they are not exactly perfect. <laughs> There's some globs, and, but they, they are functional, at least. They don't seem like they're instantly going to rip apart. But what I'm going to do, instead of just putting them back on the piece that, uh, like, so here are the keys that were messed up. This is, you know, like the enter key, and a plus key, and the period key, which are keys that I might not use all the time, but I will I'll use somewhat some of the time. But there's a few keys on the keyboard that I feel like I just rarely, if ever, use. And so I'm gonna move some good domes from those over to these more frequently used keys. Um, the ones that I'm thinking of uh, as far as keys to use, the equals key on the number pad, I feel like I always hit enter to, to total stuff up, so I rarely use that. Um, and if I'm typing it out, I'm going to use the equals key that, you know, is up here on the top row. The tilde key, uh, I don't feel like I use that very much. Backslash, I don't know if I've ever typed a backslash on a Mac. Like on a PC, I'm always typing backslash, but uh, that's an option. And in the right control, for whatever reason, when I'm typing, I'm always using my left hand for shift and control and alt. Almost never am I using my right hand, so we're gonna try to make those moves here. Um, and the <laughs> it was surprisingly difficult to find a layout for this keyboard um, on the internet. So I've got this one here, uh, which is the other one that we just kind of wiped clean to get the $20 iMac up and running. Um, so I'm gonna use this, and we just have to remember that when we're looking, you know, these are gonna be this is gonna be mirrored, you know, so this is the you know everything is backwards <laughs> so your number pad is over here um, space bar is here and you know arrow keys here and it would be nice if we could use some of these smaller keys but they they have these different smaller domes so nothing we can do about that so now it's time for some reassembly <laughs> We're going to just assume that we are doing a fantastic job and that we're going to make this thing better than it ever was before. Okay, one more of these little guys. And then we're on to connecting that circuit board. Before we do that, I do want to try to clean up these USBs a little bit. 
Um, they do look a little bit yellowed, but they also just kind of look dirty. Let's uh, real quick, I'm going to wash these off in the sink um, just so there's no, you know, because there's kind of some just crumbs and decades of who knows what falling in there. So I'm going to wash those out real quick and uh, be right back. You would wonder if that's something you could. Yeah, there we go. Almost got it. Hey, actually, that might work. So if we can shove this in just a little bit more. Great. Okay, this is actually going to work. Boom. Like that. I'm very happy about that. <laughs> All right, and then we've got this guy, which we tore just a little bit, but if we can line that up right, hopefully no one will ever know. We're gonna go to the right a little bit, right there. There's a little bit of a color difference, but hopefully it won't be too obvious. Okay, so we go in here, and hopefully these just snap back in. Yeah, that's the one that's broken. I don't see a bunch of leftover parts. Yeah, you can see, dang it, you can see just a little bit of where we jacked that up. <laughs> but that's okay. We did fix this though. That turned out really good. And as long as we don't yank on that, we'll be pretty good. These, uh, you know, there was some crusty stuff down in there. That looks a lot better. I mean, overall, I think this is a lot better than it was. So let's get the last of our screws put in. There we go. Let's see. That feels nice and sturdy. You know what we forgot? <laughs> we forgot to put in the power button. I think we can keep these guys hooked up in here. We're just gonna have to slide it in, but dang it. Those four screws gotta come back out. Let's see, this side pumps up so much easier. All right, power button. <laughs> I can't believe I did that. Goes right there. Oh, a little, little crusty. There we go. Much better. So now it's the best part. We get to put our keys back on. Yeah, these, uh... Man, it's like some of these domes aren't quite lined up. Like this one, well, this is one that we... that we messed with. See that? <laughs> That's not right. What did we do wrong here? Come back out of here. Okay, yeah, see that? Is that one broken? Oh no, this one's broken too. 
That's a broken dome there. Dang it. <laughs> that that had to have been um, a broken dome that we just didn't notice. Because that is shredded. Ah, oh, man. That's the stuff that will frustrate you right, right there. It's going to have to live this way. Because I'm just not taking it back apart right now. Dang it. That is so frustrating. Ah. Oh. Alright. We're going for the big guns. more sense and that you know and this keyboard's fine as long as they don't make any mistakes we're gonna go test it out we're back together let's see we should be able to power it on from here right well no sparks it's not on fire our caps lock LED works this is a test of the redone. Oh, did you see that? It worked at least. The delete key worked. Apple iMac keyboard. No, it isn't. And then delete. Well, the good news is the delete key works. It just feels awful. Absolutely awful. Arrow keys work. Everything works. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that is better than it was. So yeah, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to see me more. Uh, take on more stuff. Uh, if you like the computer stuff, let me know in a comment. Uh, we also do uh, cars and four wheelers and all sorts of different stuff too. That we we just take stuff that needs a little bit of help. Try to bring her back. And uh, thanks for watching. And uh, catch you next time.